So what happens if you want to do something a little bit more exciting? So let's go back to our uh, example. Woo, that's gone big as well. This is very exciting. So um, some of you watching may have seen uh, one of the blog posts or all of the blog posts that we mentioned at the start. Um, I do um, some running and I map my information in, well, Endomondo and also a Google spreadsheet with a ton of uh, things down here. But I've got my year to date, for example, how many kilometers I've run this year so far compared to how many kilometers I've run, for example, uh, by this time last year and so on. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling this information from a Google spreadsheet through the Sheeters JSON mechanism uh, in through the destinations. Uh, actually, no, this, this one is through cause anyway. We'll, we'll have a look in a second. Um, into a a, 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 a a tile. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word tile then. I've said tiles a million times over the past few weeks. And, and you can see this information surfaced here. So how do we get this on a tile? And just as equally, how do we get this on a tile? Let's look at the diagram first of all, and then we'll actually dive in to see how that works. Um, I, 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 I noticed uh, this week Matt Harding, uh, if you're there, Matt. Hi, Matt. Awesome blog post, by the way. Uh, started looking at also how this was done. And uh, yes, you can build these and can have these custom tiles without HANA, without a smart business. You know, it's just a little Fiori app, uh, sorry, a little UI5 app, one view, one controller, which we'll see right now. So if I flip over to my other tab here, the final diagram, again, same sort of layout for the diagram. We've got the tile on the right-hand side. Okay, I'm showing this, this bullet chart here, but the same thing goes for the other uh, micro chart on that tile there. So where's this bullet chart coming from? It's coming from a tile definition in the Fury launch pad where that tile definition is of type custom. So we've got static type, we've got dynamic type, and we've got custom type. And in this case, what is this custom type tile? It's actually just, quote unquote, air quotes, um, an XML view, okay? So I've defined it as a one by one tile. I've not defined, okay, I've defined the word title here for the property title, because I know that I'm not even gonna be using that. The title itself for the tile is gonna come from the XML view itself, okay? So we're building a tiny little UI5 app. And uh, as I say, it's XML, of course, why would you build your views in any anything other than XML, uh, unless you're crazy? Um, and the actual uh, path to the XML view is custom tile app, which is the name of the app that I've developed in the SAP Web IDE and deployed to the HANA Cloud platform. Dot view, because that's, of course, where you normally would keep your views in a folder called view. And the, 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 the file itself with the XML view in it is bullet chart tile dot view dot XML and so on. Notice there again, this Fury prefix, which enables the launch pad via the HANA Cloud platform to access that particular deployed um, app that you've built and pushed to the HANA Cloud platform. So what does that app look like? We'll, we've got a screenshot of the app folder structure here, but we'll look at the app in a second. Um, the app is a regular UI5 app with a component.js, which doesn't do very much. It just sits there and uh, allows me as a developer to sort of say, well, actually the, the root view is either this view or that view. I can test it in the web IDE awesome tool within the HANA Cloud platform and then just get the tile right before I deploying it to the HANA Cloud platform. As you can see here, I've got comparison micro chart tile and a corresponding controller and I've got bullet chart tile and a corresponding controller. So these two views correspond to the two views, uh, so to the two tiles that we saw in the custom part of our screen. Okay, so how does this work? The view itself defines what the tile looks like, what the contents of the, of the tile is, right? So you've got the micro chart and you've got the title and so on, which we'll have a look at. But of course, we've got to have data as well. So instead of defining a pointer to the data in the tile definition itself, like we have with the products and the dollar count and so on in the dynamic tile, we're just using a normal model um, in our UI5 application to point to, and I've got one example of a no data model and one example of a JSON model. That's a no data model one here on the uh, on the bullet chart and the Google spreadsheet one. I'm pulling that in via sheet as JSON. So I'm, obviously I'm using a JSON model. I'm defining that in the init event of each of the charts, each of the chart views controllers. Pretty simple stuff. I've deliberately done them as sort of separate self-contained view controller pairs because. So let's have a look at that, shall we? Oh, by the way, we're also going to the on-premise uh, sample service again, 
through the HANA Cloud Connector. Nothing new there. It's quite straightforward. We'll have a quick look at how the JSON uh, data model points to the, to the Google spreadsheet data, but that's just through a little Cause Anywhere app that I'm running on Heroku, okay. just for the hell of it. OK, so um, let's, have a, let's go across to here. So those are those two tiles there. Now, let's have a look at, first of all, de the definition. So there's our custom tile. Let's look at the bullet chart first, custom number two. OK, that's the screenshot that we just saw, the bullet chart tile. Uh, and it's in the app called Custom Tile App. Let's have a look at this app. So if I tab across, I, these, um, these uh, tab names could do with uh, improving. But anyway, OK, here we go. So here's our Custom Tile App. Can you see that on the screen? Yeah, they might be a little bit bigger. There we go. OK, so we've got um, our definition. Let's go back again. Our definition is this bullet chart tile, which, uh, which is the view. So let's go to that view, bullet chart tile. Where are we? OK, so as you can see, and this is very similar to um, what uh, Matt put in his blog post uh, uh, a short while ago as well, I'm actually using a generic tile from uh, the SAP M library, actually, which is quite cool. That's, just, that's moved. Um, and that generic tile through the tile content uh, contains a bullet micro chart, which is in this new library called SAP Suite UI micro chart. Now, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the, the boring definition of how this works and everything, but you can see here that I, I'm binding this generic tile to a specific entity, OData entity, from the same service, from the same tiles entity set, and it's year to date 2016, which is, relates to basically a little table in our SAP AbAppStack backend, just for testing purposes, for demonstration purposes. Um, if you're wondering, and I'm sure there are people out there that are wondering, I'm pointing to the camera, but you can't see me. Um, I'm staring sternly at the camera. Uh, there's an example of where you might validly use uh, an expression binding XML. I just want to make this number, make sure this number's a number and not a string that looks like a number. But anyway, that's, an, that's a story for another time. So where does this bullet chart model get defined? Let's have a look at the corresponding controller. And we've got the controller here. And all I'm doing is I'm saying, OK, well, let's create an OData instance of an OData model and point it through our um, destination in the Neo app, which points to a destination in HCP, to the OData service. Job done. Very, very simple. OK, now let's have a, a look back at the other tile here. This is our distances year to date for the, from the running KPIs. Um, it's just another chart, right? It's just another chart. It's a bullet micro chart. Uh, sorry, not a bullet micro chart, a comparison micro chart. It's a chart anyway. Um, so here we go, comparison micro chart. If you've seen the previous one, this one should be fairly straightforward as well. There's nothing really that new. All I'm doing here again is I've got a generic tile. I've got within the tile content, I've got a comparison micro chart, also from this SAP Suite UI micro chart library. And I'm binding um, various properties from the tile content, there's a unit there, for example. I've got some hard-coded text, for example. But I'm also binding um, the, the data for the comparison microchart to the main, which relates to the main tab of this Google spreadsheet. Because when you expose the Google spreadsheet as JSON, you get something that looks like that. Now, obviously, I'm going through this very, very fast. We may want to do an exciting sort of deeper dive into the deeper dive, a meta deep dive, to, to sort of do a little bit more justice to this. But what I'm doing effectively is saying, well, I want to pull this data in and expose it through, for example, the, um, the, the aggregations here. So it's, it's all, the data is all there. And this time, rather than pulling information from an on-premise app, app stack for your own data, I'm pulling it from somewhere else. And it works equally beautifully. Um, by the way, again, because I couldn't influence the Google Apps Script mechanism to stick Cause Anywhere headers on. All I'm doing is I run my little, my own little uh, Cause Anywhere, um, where is it, um, service on Heroku that sticks uh, headers on for me so that uh, I can consume it directly from here. 